Sanger sequencing. Sanger sequencing is based on dideoxynucleotides. Let's first of all understand what dideoxynucleotides really are. DNA is mainly made of tiny building blocks called nucleotides. A nucleotide has a sugars to which nitrogenous base and three phosphate groups called triphosphate are attached. But the nucleotides in DNA are deoxynucleotides. Deoxy means lacks oxygen. Deoxynucleotides lack oxygen at 2' carbon. Instead of OH group at their 2' carbon, they only have hydrogen at their 2' carbon. But dideoxynucleotides lack 3' oxygen too. The term dideoxy means lacks two oxygens. A dideoxynucleotide lacks two oxygens, one at its 3' carbon and another at 2' carbon. Remember, the OH group at 3' carbon is crucial in DNA polymerization because the new nucleotide is added to this 3' OH group in strand elongation. But dideoxynucleotide lacks this 3' OH group which helps in the attaching of new nucleotides. So when dideoxynucleotide is added to the growing strain, it lacks 3' OH group. The new nucleotide cannot attach to the strain because it requires 3' OH group to attach to. So the elongation of new DNA strain terminates. Sanger used these dideoxynucleotides to terminate the DNA polymerization. Let's explore the Sanger sequencing method in a better way. The template DNA to be sequenced is first fragmented and added into four different tubes. The other major requirements of Sanger sequencing are DNA polymerase. Primer, which acts as the starting point of nucleotide polymerization, and four nucleotide bases DATP, DGTP, DCTP, and DTTP. All these requirements are fulfilled in every tube. Besides them, there is a unique addition in every tube. That is the addition of very low amount of dideoxynucleotides in every tube. The first tube has dideoxy ATP. The second tube contains dideoxy TTP. The third tube includes dideoxy CTP. And the fourth tube contains dideoxy GTP. Clones of the target DNA segments are made in Sanger sequencing. Let's see tube 1 to find out what happens inside the tube. Inside the tube, DNA polymerase starts forging the new strand by using the template DNA strand as a reference. Starting from the primer, it keeps netting deoxynucleotides to elongate the growing strand. But when it randomly adds the dideoxy ATP, the strand synthesis terminates. This is because no further nucleotide could be added to the dideoxy ATP because of the absence of its 3' OH group. This whole process keeps repeating several times. As a result, several DNA strands of different lengths are formed inside the tube. If dideoxy NTP is added early, the strand will be shorter in length. The later addition of dideoxy NTP will make the length of the strand longer. This whole process runs in all four tubes. As a result, the formation of different fragments of DNA of different lengths takes place in all four tubes. For further analysis of their nucleotide sequence, we perform polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and then autoradiography. So we take all the DNA fragments formed in each tube and load them on different wells of the gel. Remember, smaller fragments travel further while larger fragments stay stuck near the starting point. The radiogram displays different bands. Each band represents a fragment of DNA. Remember, we read the bands from bottom to top or from shortest to the largest. The shortest band depicts 5 prime end, while the largest band depicts the 3 prime end. Now by examining the band pattern, we can deduce the sequence of nucleotides in the desired DNA strain. Let's find the nucleotide sequence. The first nucleotide is C. The second nucleotide is A. 
the third one is T, the fourth nucleotide is T, the fifth nucleotide is G, the sixth nucleotide is A, the seventh nucleotide is C, the eighth nucleotide is A, the ninth nucleotide is G, the tenth nucleotide is C. Remember, this sequence is not the original sequence of the template TNA strand. It is the complementary sequence of the template TNA strand. Knowing this complementary sequence, we can easily find out the real sequence, which will be In modern Sanger sequencing, each dideoxynucleotide is labeled with a fluorescence dye. The dye can be of different colors like red, green and yellow etc. This makes it possible to add everything in a single tube and run the reaction in one single tube rather than four. The fragments made in the tube are loaded on gel in a single well rather than multiple wells. The colored bands become visible on the gel under UV light. We could also use capillary electrophoresis to separate the fragments of DNA. In capillary electrophoresis, the fragments of DNA are separated in a capillary tube. To identify the sequence of nucleotides in capillary, a laser is passed through each band. A detector called CCD or charged coupled device detects these fluorescence signals. It then displays these signals on a computer in the form of peaks on a graph. This graph is usually known as the chromatogram or electrophorogram. Each peak on the chromatogram depicts a nucleotide. This way, we can easily discover the desired DNA sequence. That is it for today's video. Make sure you are subscribed to the Science Inter channel. Like and share this video if you wanna help others. Stay tuned. I will see you in the next video.